but then well, otherwise we can do that to okay, change that's that. I think that's that's the way. It's okay, so so it still allows for what we were thinking about was first of all the rule that was written in there. I think we had written in um, the previous Friday or previous Thursday. It used yeah. to be Friday. Yeah, Friday. So because it was the previous Friday, that was based on when we used to have everything in written uh, hard copy. Right. And it would, you know, people wouldn't and, receive those. And the post would be out Everything, right. right. And, and, but really now everybody gets and, things electronically. And late file was between Tuesday, Friday and Tuesday. So it still met open meeting, but it wasn't under our rules. Right, right. So we're allowing it not to be a late file if it came prior to Tuesday noon. Anything that came, anything came to the council prior to Tuesday noon could be included in the packet electronically or otherwise. Yeah. And so no, not be considered no, a late file. Because as, as even um, Bill Dwight said when he was here, uh, that it, we, it makes it seem as though we have this deluge of late files all the time. But when really, there are things they're that are coming, really. out, of, they're coming yeah. out of the ordinance or coming out of other committees. So yeah, please, please, please. Might I just suggest, though, that you strike of an emergency nature? I, I never, I, we, had this in the, we had this in the charter discussion, the same thing. Emergency is, is certainly subjective, but something coming out of ordinance that has to wait two and a half weeks is not necessarily an emergency, but you do want to get it on the, pro on the, on the track and on the process. And, but it, you know, but I, I in order to comply with open meeting, doesn't it have to be unanticipated or? Well, did, yeah, but we, we can, you can keep that in there. It says, provided the matter is of an emergency nature and could not be reasonably anticipated prior to, you can just get rid just of say, emergency just nature. You just, just say, say provided the matter could, could not be. Can I read my language that's amended based on this yep. conversation? Um, 35, late file rule. All orders, ordinances, resolves, contracts, and written business to be transacted by the City Council shall be filed with the Clerk of the Council on or before noon on the, oh, yeah, just, hang on, I'll fix that. No measure filed after Tuesday, noon, prior to the date of the Council meeting shall be considered unless the matter could not be reasonably anticipated prior to the filing deadline. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That worked. That's it. So then we move it from Friday to Tuesday. It's not a late file. For a lot and if it's only if it's unanticipated, can it enter the agenda after, after, after Tuesday? Tuesday. But especially it allows for things that have already gone through transportation and parking and Ed Lou and every place else and they came finally to ordinance and then not have to wait yeah. another two yeah. and a half weeks. Yeah, because if it comes out of ordinance Monday, right. it yeah, makes yeah. Mary can do it in the morning and, and it makes the meeting as a regular agenda item rather than so the, the, the real question is, and this could be a legal question for the, for the Secretary of the Commonwealth, is whether, or the, or the, the Attorney General, is whether the ch a chair of a, of, the, of a committee would reasonably anticipate something being advanced from a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. You know, whether... Like on Wednesday. Right, <laughs> exactly. Whether they, would cons whether they could reasonably anticipate that. And I, I don't know, that's, that seems to me it'd be, you could, it's a toss-up. Should I read the whole rule now? I just want to question about your statement that you just made, Councilor. Mm -hmm. In regards to, like I've noticed, we just had recently, the taxi cab license. Now, that was not a late file. Like, it was a late file, right? I mean, is there importance there that that had to come in to City Council or could it have been held back for another two more weeks? I mean, maybe in that case, it could have prevented someone from conducting business. So. Right. But I think the, the constraints that we're writing on the late exactly. file, that we're putting a lot of constraints on there such that, yeah, we wouldn't have the, we wouldn't have the flexibility to consider that late file. That's my concern. Correct. Right. If there was no, I mean, if there was, if it, if it could have been reasonably seen, and we're back to our, we can't vote to break the open meeting lines. Exactly. So, that's true. That's true. You know, if, if, if it's, mm -hmm. if we don't have the posting time, because the, the late, before the late file was between Friday and Tuesday, but it still made it. So if it's after Tuesday now, it has to be unanticipated. So as long as that taxi cab license came in by Tuesday, Tuesday noon, it would have made it. Then it's okay. Then it's within the 48 hours that open meeting law requires. Mm -hmm. One of the other things is that I, I renamed the rule the late file rule because now it's a different number and just so that we can just for user friendly to say the late file rule if you want to say And we moved it to cut out late files. And I think we we moved it so we don't have to vote on it anymore. Okay. Oh, the late file 
probably we could call it the unanticipated measure rule. <laughs> I'd like that. Um, I think that's good. This is an extra layer over the open meeting law protection. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's possible that uh, we could get a late file, which would be something submitted after Tuesday, that mm -hmm. uh, was reasonably anticipated by the chair, but not put on the agenda. And that would be a violation of the open meeting sure. law. And we could vote on it six ways. Would we still could, be in violation right, of the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. right. Right. But there's nothing that comes to open yeah, we don't nothing, have nothing we can write. Nothing we can right. do to break the open meeting. But, so good. But as you say, technically, you could find something that's later at 7 p.m. Tuesday. That's right. This is it. Yes. This is still made. This is it. That we were still, yeah, we, so, so we, anything that comes between noon and 7 would fall under the reasonably unanticipated clause. Well, even if it comes after 7, no, no. it could still be reasonably unanticipated. But we'd have we to can't, vote. We wouldn't have the option to vote for it because it would be in violation of the open meeting. No, because it could be. But you can violate, you, you, it's not a violation of the open meeting law to, to vote on something that came up yesterday if it were, was not anticipated. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. The op open meeting law allows for, um, the, uh, uh, un for unanticipated, unanticipated measures. Do we want to switch this to 7 Tuesday? Well, no. Then we got, then we got Mary's got a time. She's, she's got the time. Okay, so. Well, no, I'm, I'm on that hand, um, we close at 4.30 for business, so the city clerk wouldn't have time to post it. And if you if you sent me Yeah, I think they did it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this leaves, and that buys us days. <laughs> so I can just, what our firm this would actually simplify it, simplify it a lot. Maybe instead of calling it late file, though, we should use the language that the open meeting law uses, which is the unanticipated measures. I like that. Then it's clear that that's the only. That's the only. Yeah, there are no more late files. It's just only unanticipated mm -hmm. business will be considered. Unanticipated business or measures or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that after Tuesday noon, only unanticipated business will make the council. Okay, I'll read out the whole rule. Uh, Thirty-five unanticipated measures rule. All orders, ordinances, resolves, and contracts, and written business to be transacted by the City Council shall be filed with the Clerk of the Council on or before noon Tuesday prior to the date of the Council meeting. No measures filed after Tuesday noon prior to the date of the Council meeting shall be considered unless the matter could not be reasonably anticipated prior to the filing deadline. That's nice and simple. By the Chair. Isn't it by the Chair? Or is it by everybody? Well, the chair the open meeting law is the, by the Chair. Yeah, you could say, uh, unless they're unanticipated by the Chair. If I'm, am I right, Council Adams? If open law compels the chair, because someone in the on, in the body might know about a measure, but if, if they don't have the chair, well, it, it, it would be the chair and the mayor then, because they're the setters of the agenda. But the, the, only the chair said the agenda. No, no, I think but, it's no, sufficient but, to say by, this by charter, the, the, yeah, the mayor and, and have that. president chair, uh, excuse me, set the agenda. So it wouldn't just be, the, I mean, if you want to have the language in, you probably want to have both because the charter. Or I think it's assumed. I think it can be assumed by the, that you don't have to put in who's setting the agenda. I think Because the charter takes care of it. Well, yeah. we, do, we do have our, our typical, uh, well, for council rules, I mean, the council committees reserve for chair, topics of the chair that right. we anticipate. But if we're talking about things that are going on the council agenda, then it would actually be topics of the chair and, and mayor. I wouldn't write that. Okay. I would just, just leave it, it, yeah. just leave it as passively. The determiner of unanticipated business will take care of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, the charter does that. Oh, okay. that's, I think that, that's, that's, all the mayor, that's all the mayor had for input. Yeah, he just had those three. And we did some from last time, too, that you were going to change, right? We, we, we had some things to talk to Alan about. Oh, um, I think that was before. Are you talking about earlier when I, with the quorum issue? Well, we had... When last last time we were here, we went through and talked about some things that you were going to actually enter. Yeah, it was two meetings ago. It was when Bill was here. Last was meeting. Last meeting. That was last meeting. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I mean, Oh, um, oh yeah, that's right. One of the things I looked at was uh, charter objections.
reduction and was and whether we could limit that to be non dilatory as we've done with oh um, yeah and the answer is we can't limit it the answer is we can't limit it we can't have that limit it's against each other what uh, number was that charter objection was Thank you. Thank you. 22, yeah. Because yeah, it was more than just the mayor stuff. We, yeah, the mayor stuff came after, actually. So yeah. that was the, um, okay, so that has want, the privilege, correct, of all motions. We wanted to that put in there it. under, we wanted to put in, though, under 22, say, the same clause that we have under reconstruction. Uh, Right. Yeah, the question was, can we include not to be used in a dilatory manner? Under reconsideration B, 23B, we have language that makes sure that it's not used in a dilatory right. manner. We can't do the same thing with charter so objection. we can't do that with objection. Okay. Huh? Okay. That was the only note I had. My understanding of, of the charter objection is that it's, uh, if, if it's, if the charter has a little bit more information than just this, and um, the postponement, if it's a charter objection only brought by one counselor, the postponement is until, until the next meeting of the council, which could be three days later. You know, you could set a special meeting, it could be three days later. Well, but if multiple counselors have raised the same charter objection, then it has to be the next regular meeting. Rule 22 is where we have to Right, but I think there's, isn't there more? No. Oh, right, right it's there. it yeah. says right there, if two members present. Yeah, yeah two members. So it's, two so it, the you know. four. Okay. So there's but some there's some language in there that you know you could you object. Can't be used more than more than once. You can't be used more than once. If, if you can, so, so if someone's still delaying, you can, in theory, you could say fine. If one person delays, you say fine, and then you set a mm -hmm. special meeting of the council three days later. Right, but right. And, and, but also if this is going to be an issue of a meeting, we could drag the solicitor in here to make a ruling on the spot, you know, right. and say hey, it doesn't move on. <laughs> Uh, I don't think there are any other changes. Uh, we're that close. I do, but I don't think it does. Does the council want me to change it to 10 o'clock council meeting? I don't think there's anything else of, of substance. Do you have to uh, say something for Mary? Well, what about these that own rights? Well, then maybe we should get to that next. So, what could I ask you, Councillor? Can you can't block ending of meetings? <laughs> I'd be happy to draft it in right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 31? If you don't mind. Which one um, do you want to do first? Well, uh, it doesn't matter. They're both they're both uh, weird. Uh, the thir rule thirty one is the reference to committees, yeah. and this is this is the this is the hotly I know this has been hotly talked about. Because at the last meeting it was uh, I, I didn't I don't I haven't seen the minutes of the last meeting, but I understand that um, the council has told me that um, the, the sort of the Roth amendment, which I think is a is a red herring here, was was removed when it had been put in before. So. Um, I've been, I was, I'm a proponent of, of some form of uh, greater information to the council. But I do believe that um, the way that the Rule 31 had was been written to incorporate the Roth, the, the, the spirit of the, of, the, of the Roth Amendment um, was onerous. Um, and, and I think it's onerous because it requires, it requires because things that are sent, things that are, are made public regarding a, a met, an issue, um, aren't you? You may you may not always know that something has been made public regarding an issue, right? So so if, if I could receive forty emails about a particular measure, and if I don't forward it to the chair or to the to the mayor or to everybody else, it's technically public because my email is public, but. It's it's onerous to expect that 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 um, 
that the, the council clerk would know that, would know that I received those emails, and to require the council clerk to, to pass all that on to, yeah. to the committee. So that, that, there's a problem there. That's, that's, it's, it's burdensome. Um, I went and I read, uh, however, I mean, that being said, I, I went and I read the, um, the actual council rules that we passed uh, this year, or I'm sorry, last year, uh, the, the ones that we've been, that the council's been approving every, every two years. Um, and, and in that, it says that when the city council refers to um, in any agency, you know, any, uh, any subcommittee or, or, or other body like the planning board or commission or whatever, that it will furnish um, a copy of all votes and papers pertaining to the subject matter referred. So our current rules, the ones we're living under now, which are outdated and they need to be replaced and so on, the current rules afford those subcommittees, those subcommittees and those commissions and agencies and so on, the, the spirit of the Roth Amendment already. But um, the council doesn't require the same from those subcommittees. So I really don't understand that. It seems like the best practice that we would be furnishing the subcommittees with all, all the relevant uh, public information, but not requiring it of them to give it back to the council. It's it's um, an asymmetry, which I, I find problematic. But I also agree that it's, it, even as written, the rules we're living under now, as written, are burdensome. They're onerous. Because there are papers that are public that we can't always collect. Again, those were written in the time before there were electronic documents and there mm -hmm. were papers. There were actual, you know, carbon copy papers with a blue machine that went like this. Yeah, but we've been approving them every year, every two years. I understand, but I think that the inference there is that, and you just made the mention that, are you including all of the emails that a counselor might receive and the well, phone calls? It the says of the phone calls? all the votes or papers pertain to the subject matter. That's, right. what, that's what we approved. Ha is, this, is something I have on my, my laptop computer a paper? Uh, you, you tell me. I don't think so. So it's and only paper. So if someone prints out an email, then it's paper. Yeah. But if they don't, then it's not. Yeah. Well, then anything that the council receives, that's paper. Right. Which which became a problem, I think, when we started receiving reams of paper, every councilor this this big around okay. particular documents. Right. So it's in our rules. It's in our rules, and we're, we we have them. We afford that. We afford the information to our subcommittees. We, what the council receives, it's, it's been a practice for decades, I suppose, or at least since uh, they were amended back in 2010, to send those, to send those papers to the, to the subcommittees. Mm -hmm. right. um, what you're saying about referring to committees. So at council Thursday night, you referred to several ordinances. I sent those to those committees today. But even though I asked for the review or decision of a committee, doesn't mean I'm going to get it. The Board of Public Works, Planning Board, oftentimes their minutes are not ready in time for me to bring it to you when it comes to another committee. Because I might have sent it to them today from Thursday's meeting, they may not be meeting for two weeks, and then Ed Lou might meet two weeks after that, and mm -hmm. then ordinance might meet again, but if I don't chase certain people, I sometimes don't get any answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say, please let me know your review decision, that doesn't mean they're going to. I think there, there are committees that I take notes for that I would then know the decision and so forth, but there are some out there that I have no control mm -hmm. over when they're gonna tell me. So I think that the, the question becomes when when someone delivers to the council um, you know, a book or five books, hard copy books related to a particular topic, do we need to take those and copy them and get them to, well, first of all, into the hands of each counselor 
prior to the meeting, because that was, that was what the amendment said. So everybody, everybody has to have in their hands a copy of those five texts. We have to purchase those, and we have to copy those, and make into PDF those. I think it became a logistical problem. It was a logistical issue more than anything else. Is what we're considering. Yes. Not, not in principle, but really, so, how do we do this? How so, do we? So I've, I've rewritten it. Oh. I rewrote, I rewrote it. Um, and, and maybe it can be even further amended. And I think it, it might be. Um, but it, the idea is, is um, the way I envisioned it was that electronic information that's sent only to the chair or to the council, to all the, all the council, which would of course include the chair. Mm -hmm. That is intended to be sh to be public uh, public that is that is the kind of public document that needs to be transmitted um, if it's not sent to the chair then it, it's not a, it's not it may be a public document but it, the intention for it to con for it to be transmitted on to the other decide uh, other decision making bodies is is uh, is queer but we need to uh, we need to upload it somehow to Make it accessible to the public electronically. Well, that's what what I said. Well, if it's electronic, then it's like then you then you can you know it's not that hard to. Otherwise, to if it's a book, I think you said that we might. Didn't we have this discussion that we would leave? We could make books a, make a copy or something like oh, that. Oh, we would leave mm -hmm. a copy for reference, a reference copy in the, in the council clerk's office. Right, or the library or something or, like that. Right. But but so so what I what I said was that um, uh, that that address to the council. Or council president, uh, and then on on the back end, when when the things come back for referral, that's the second paragraph. Um, that the, that it's not it's really not the duty of the uh, council clerk to be chasing after the uh, multiple member bodies, these subcommittees, for for the for their minutes or or for their for their reports. It's the duty of the chair to passes on the, the recommendation um, to make sure that the, that the, the minutes to the best they can go go with it. And so we have it, I said, I put either in draft form or finalized. And then I also said, all documents addressed to the committee or committee chair pertaining to the subject matter. So the idea is that it, it's not all public doc, it's not all the documents that might be public. It's not all the doc, it's not, it's not all the documents that someone might you know, refer to or whatever, but if it's specifically addressed to the committee chair, then the committee chair forwards that on with a draft version of the minutes within the time frame allotted, which was the same um, 60 days as in the previous rules, uh, to, to the council. So that's the, that's the, I'm trying to get away from the burdens, and I, di I didn't capture all of your concerns, Council Crane, because I didn't say um, paper, uh, paper can be not copied. And then the final, but, but we can add that. If I'm very fine with adding it. And then the final piece is, I also contemplated that, um, that it, all the documents wouldn't even necessarily need to be sent to all the councilors. Um, and what I said was that a consolidated posting on a dedicated web page would be sufficient. So, so who would do that? Well, so, so the, work? well, I, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you honestly, I, I think that I'm not sure who does it now. I know that the city clerk does it a little bit. I know that the, the planning board, uh, the office of planning development does it a little bit. I know that the council clerk does it a little bit. But the idea would be that you'd have, um, you'd have uh, maybe on the city council web page, uh, a, 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 the, the page would say, you know, all documents relating to this to this order, click here, and then everything coming back from the committee would just be. So I, it, the idea wouldn't even be that you have to distribute it. It would just have to be public in a certain location. My, my concern, you you yes. I'm having a hard time with this. All right, so say each one of the different committees that we have in the chair, and we have our minutes to do, correct? Is this what you're talking about, the minutes with Barry Roth's amendment? Because that was his concerns as when he went to planning that nothing was logged on what he presented. But I have a problem with the procedures that we're doing now 
because when our minutes are completed in our committee, it is brought forth right to Mary. So, I don't understand what this is all about, Owen, and maybe you can really explain it to me about, because planning to me was the big problem. I cannot answer for conservation. I do know just recently I had talked with Sarah on a couple of issues that was coming to city council, but we didn't have any minutes at all to verify anything. So she said, I only have a draft. I said, I'll take the draft. So I think we need to look at the big picture of planning board, okay, when we're getting those minutes, because I, I agree with our, our council clerk, and even with Bill Joy, it's going to be months and months to get some of these minutes. We have a problem, but I don't know how to solve that problem. I'm in trouble with draft minutes, because I've seen, you know, minutes come up where they've had some, you know, substantive changes. Yes. You know, and, and I wouldn't want to make a decision off draft minutes that, in fact, were incorrect. I feel bad about that. Well, I didn't. I didn't have a problem with it because their meeting was like the following week and there was no changes on it. I, I don't know what, maybe because um, there were many occasions where we, we received this many stacks of paper and I'm worried about all the three. I know. Um, but let's say, for example, just because somebody really did had a, had a strong objections and wanted to slow something, really slow something down, and just came in with you know a hand truck with boxes and boxes and boxes of paper that that wanted to be entered into the record, that yeah. would put Mary or someone else. On, you know, I mean, I don't know. It has to be tabulated. It has to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could you, you, we could also include language that the rule can't be used to in a dilatory matter, and the chair could determine what's dilatory. That's, that's how we place that, that sort of, not same limitation on other things, but if someone was going to do that just to, you know, do a, a different form of filibuster, certainly we'd have to either, we have to create in the rule a way for that not to happen, at a minimum. Yeah. What I was thinking is, you know, we should really consider what is the issue, what is the problem, and I think that's, mm -hmm. the problem, I think, was that, as most of the council on Earth has really discussed, that we're, we're getting, um, recommendations either for or without recommendation or against um, measures that were sent to subcommittees back to council and we don't know how those subcommittees really oh, and, except, subcommittees. right because we don't have the approved minutes what we do have is the chair of that committee kind of mm -hmm. um, you know giving us a synopsis of what the, mm -hmm. what the results were yeah. particularly where it comes without a recommendation because there was no there wasn't conclusion you want to know what did they talk about? And um, or if it's a split vote or something. Yeah, yeah and then, right. but we do, but for council committees, we do have the participants here. Yeah. And we certainly could say, right. you know, fine, the, the, the chair is reporting for the majority, but Councillor Freeman Dan has voted against the issue. Would he speak to what is. All oh, that never happened. And then we don't know whether the councillor will actually speak accurately as to what were their, what were their statements a week and a half ago with that committee, or whether they changed their mind, and so, you know. It's, I, for council committees, we have the, the warm bodies here to do that, but for planning board or CONSCOM or DPW, those bodies, we don't, so. Right, so that's, the, I did distinguish yeah. between, the, between the council committees and the, and the other multiple member bodies. Maybe that would be appropriate to distinguish between, I, I agree with like to say, concern. planning board, board of public works, conservation commission, mm -hmm. uh,
filibuster any uh, um, any recommendation. The only possible thing it would be is if, if we said that all paper had to be just you know copied and distributed, then then you'd have a a, a photocopying delay basically. You know? But um, I, I'm not willing to fund. I don't think the council should fund that. I don't think the city should fund that. So we can maybe add. I can we can easily add something that says paper paper only paper copies can be available in in the, mm -hmm. in, in the council check, in the in the you know in the library. So electronic office. would be circulated and paper copies would be available in the for office of the clerk. Right. And I didn't even say that electronic copies mm -hmm. need to be circulated. They could just be posted on a, on a website that's accessible. Mm -hmm. That's accessible for them. Um, so that's that's step one. Um, what you were talking about as far as draft minutes go, I concur. Oftentimes draft minutes do have differences. But there are two things there are two at least positives there. One, the committee, the subcommittee has, uh, the, or the multiple member body group, they have 60 days mm -hmm. to return the recommendation. Mm -hmm. So if they, if anyone thinks that the recommend, that their minutes aren't, aren't ready yet, they can, they can hold on the recommendation until they, until the next meeting, presumably, until, let's hope the next meeting is within that time frame to approve the minutes to then send to, on the recommendation. So they, they have the standard two months. Uh, or 60 days to, to, con to conduct that. Um, but if they do feel as though it's, that there's, that there's a matter, their matter is urgent, then draft minutes might be better than no minutes. So I, I still think that, that I agree with um, uh, Council LaBarge that draft minutes might be better than nothing. Uh, and then the final point, to your point, Councilor, is that I, I know this is, this rule is different from the basic rule, which is, which, which we'd like to make, which is committees need to take good records and send them on to the council. But that rule has gotten, that, that sort of fundamental intuition is tricky because, um, because of the issue of paper, for, in, for example, because of the issue of um, if someone stands up here and speaks a mile a minute, the, 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 the secretary or the whoever is returning or whoever is recording the information just might not have, might not get the fidelity of their, might not record what they're saying completely accurately. And then they could, they could come and say, oh, you didn't get me, you didn't capture what I was saying. And that's why we often ask them to submit their comments in writing or, or, like, or email or something so that we can faithfully capture what they're saying. Um, so, it, but, so there's always these complications to the basic intuition, which I think you and I share, and I think most of the councilors share, that we want to have more information when we come to make our decisions. It's just codifying it, and that's the hard part. Mm -hmm. um, even with our council president, I mean, he has outright stated, when you are doing the minutes, okay, that it's short and easy, okay? Which I found very difficult for two years of doing minutes on social services and veterans affairs, okay, I could write a book because of statements that were occurring at our, at our meetings. And I feel sometimes what people are saying is very valuable and it should be logged in there. So we're being told to shorten them because it's being recorded. So are you going to get what you actually want, counselor? I don't think you are because we've been told by our council president to shorten them. I mean, Ruth heard that tonight, too, about from, from Bill, about shortening minutes. Well, I, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, at the beginning of our term, I know that council president emphasized we would try to really have audio-visual mm -hmm. recordings for every subcommittee, which would take care of the whole right. issue, I would imagine. I mean, because then everything could be uploaded to Vimeo or something, and anybody who wanted to, who couldn't be at the meeting themselves, could just virtually attend the meeting. And but you can be short and concise and still capture the essence of somebody's support or lack of support or recommendation. I mean, you, you don't have to say word for word, but you can indicate that somebody came and, and spoke against the issue for three reasons and state what the reasons were. Skill to so I, I think that there's two elements there. One is that I, I don't think the council is um, can really operate as the police person for, for poorly created minutes. Um, you know, I, I, I often go to planning board meetings and I, I I look at the planning board minutes and they're they're sparse. They they include I think the sort of the 
the state minimum of what you need to have mm -hmm. per minute. But I also I, I don't want to I don't want to criticize the um, the note taker because oftentimes they're they're both participating in the meeting, you know, leading some of the discussion and taking minutes is very difficult. It is. Very difficult to do, and um, the meetings are very long. So I, I don't have any I really don't have a, a, a problem with that, uh, and I also don't have a problem with electronic communication, uh, electronic recording of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that if, I do think that if the, um, you know, th things aren't, it isn't really easy for a, I'm trying to get the spirit here, right? And it really isn't easy for a, um, for a citizen to follow our intra-government action. It, re it really is not that easy. Um, even if they have the basic idea that it comes before the council and gets referred and comes back to the council and gets to votes, Sometimes following the exact dates and so on, and sometimes just being able to be on top of it and being available is difficult. And if a, if, if a citizen has an issue and they email, I think they email uh, the they have the presence of the ability and the, and the presence of mind to email something to the to the to a committee that's discussing something. Um, you know that, and I think that they they should have a reasonable expectation. I don't think it's I don't think it's a right. I don't think it's a God can write, but I think they should have a reasonable expectation what they email should get carried on mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. to, the, to the body when the, when the final decision is made. I think that's reasonable. It would, you know, it would be great because all of these committees, you know, if it's a committee, it's on the website. And to have them responsible for posting this stuff on their own web, you know, on their own See, part of the website so that it's available for public scrutiny. And that's what I try to, to that's what I try to work in. Yeah. I'll tell you what, why don't but I try to fix it again? Mm -hmm. Can I just ask you again, because we've often heard counselors reference the two hundred emails they received on an issue. Mm -hmm. Should those two hundred emails be forwarded? And then should they reasonably be expected to be somehow um, well, we got, read, read verbatim? We got most of them right. at the at the middle street we got most of the middle street emails. I I, I thought that was very informative. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they need to be emailed every council. I think you could. I, I think guess I'm wondering about the numbers because we've often heard reference to 200. Emails. Yes. Yeah. I, I think you could set up a website. Okay. Uh, it could be on the on the on the site and say and that says mm -hmm. here are here's a here's a. Um, so each councilor should uh, actually take here. every correspondence that might have to do with no, any I, issue that I might do, go to I do not put that. I, no, you're putting words in my mouth. It, with with uh, in this rule, I said anything sent to the chair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not to a member of the committee or not to a right, counselor it, I think who that's, asks that it be... Right, if the, well, if the counselor sends it to the chair, then, then it would be included. But okay. So I, 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 the reason I'm doing that is because I think it's burdensome. I think it's burdensome to assume that, that it would be basically Mary chasing all the counselors around saying, did you get any emails about this? You, uh, that's burdensome. You know, the well, counselor, you, have the experience, no. you had this experience with the landfill. Uh, thank you, because that's what I've had my hand up for. You are not a counselor then. I can't tell you the amount of emails that came in to that office. Huge. And at that point, we had a gag order. We could not even talk with residents. Nobody could. All nine counselors could not talk with residents at all. They were filled with emails. Tons of them. And we were required to send all of those to Right, and so, exactly. so you wouldn't have that same requirement here, but if the but the, you would have the same process in a sense that if the council, if the chair of the committee or the president of the of the council received the email, then it would need to be put somewhere where it could be accessed by all the subcommittees. So you're going to perfect this a little more. I'm going to get. I'm going to yes. I don't, I don't expect you to incorporate it tonight, but I, I'm hearing. I hear some resistance about the process. I'm trying to fix it to get mm -hmm. to capture some of the, I think, a, a very reasonable expectation How of fairness. Yeah, of fairness that when it, when it, when someone, you know, when a member of the public shows up at, at a meeting uh, and they speak their piece and then they go home, in their minds, yeah, they know that it's not the final, that, that it's not the final body, but they, it's, I think it's very hard. It's also very hard to assume that they're going to follow the issue as it winds through government. And I think it's fair to be able to keep on to pass I, it on. When we talked about, we did talk about this at length at the last meeting too, 
And what we did was we talked about how this is actually um, redundant because of the requirements for public documents that exist under state law. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if someone comes with a written statement to the city council meeting or to any other meeting, and it says public, public documents, so it's a written statement, and then they ask, I'd, I'd like this to be entered into the record and then hand it to the council clerk. It's already required by state law that it be mm -hmm. there as part of the... Mm -hmm. So I think that what we what we did actually is we asked... We, we, and now this reminds me, this was one other issue you were going to ask the, the solicitor. Or maybe we, maybe we wrote it already in there. We asked that we, we talked about referencing the Massachusetts public documents law with regard to this matter and saying that um, basically any documents received or any um, subcommittees shall adhere to Mass General Law or whatever law it is that uh, pertains to the maintenance of public documents. So, and, if, and so specifically, anybody comes to transportation and parking, obviously with the, with the applications, those are public documents, but anything that's written is and handed then at the meeting is, uh, is already required under the Massachusetts public documents laws to be kept as part of the public record. I think what happened was I had drafted in to the rule of something similar to the Roth Amendment. And, I, and I, if I remember right, it was during that discussion yeah. that we had that talk, but then we ended up deciding that we were going to keep it as, uh, as the rule was written before. So, so I, I think I, so I never presented that to to Al Seawall. It was because we're now back to the original rule. Was yeah. there a problem with us referencing the public document law? Because I remember we had a long conversation about that. I don't know if there was a problem. I think I, just, I think that once we decided to just go with the original rule <laughs> and, and not not anything related to not any without incorporation of anything that Mr. Roth was suggesting, I I. I Okay. Okay. But so, um, I guess I'm asking, you don't, uh, counsel, the way that it's written right now, the way that mm -hmm. Council Adams was drafted, that's insufficient? Yeah, I think so. So, I, I also believe that the public records is, um, insufficient? Is, you is diagonal. No, I just think it's diagonal. Okay. All right. So, um, I don't, I don't know the laws backwards and forwards, but is it, is it's it the here. case? What's that? If we can pull it right up, it's pretty easy. That would be good. Is it the case that uh, it's that a document that's submitted must be included in the minutes of the meeting, or is it just that they are public record? record. So if that's They're a different part of the public record. Right, but that's a different that's different to me whether they're the minutes. And then the second part is um, if we don't require if this council does not require that the minutes be sent on to the council with a recommendation, then we could have public records, but they would be sitting. In, in the in somebody's uh, uh, outbox mm -hmm. without us actually seeing them. So I think I don't think it's going beyond our public records law. I don't think it's. I just think it's a little different. I think we're taking those public records and conveying them in a way that helps the council make that helps the council understand what was discussed. That, that, so I don't think it's like I don't think it's over and above. I just think it's using those public records in a slightly different way, mm -hmm. and and also saying and, and what I wrote. I just want to add this last part. I'm sorry, Councilor. The last part is, I'm not the the, the rule as I wrote it, and I, I and again I'm going to say it again. I think it's onerous to require that all public documents or all public records get sent on to the committee because for the very reason of the 200 emails and so on that are just sent to one council or something like that. If they have to be spe specifically sent, intended for the chair or the the committee as a whole for them to really be necessary to convey on. That's what I'm trying to say. If I can recall to the Barry Roth Amendment, it was brought up in regards to, say, for an example, you went to the planning board. You could bring in a written statement, okay, which would then be submitted to the planning board. But I thought it also was stated that it could be attached to your minutes. That's the idea. That That's the intention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I don't have a problem with that at all because I think it should be attached. So 
So, Councilor Freeman Daniels is going to continue to work on this one issue. Thank you for listening. Right. Yeah. Do you are you all comfortable? Because I think the part that we've got that we've been working on is ready. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry, Brian. Oh, I, I was going to address that. I, I was just going to suggest that what what we. You guys have another amendment. Oh, Sorry. Oh, well, let's do that one. Well, if, we could, if I could just say about that, because I don't know where this is going to go. Um, if, if, if you're going to do some rewriting of that, um, really specifically to deal with paper and with them. Um, so if you're going to do some rewriting of that, my hope is that you can send this forward tonight and you can present that to council. And just because we're going to for our three, three, days, three months and several days post-charter mm -hmm. acceptance. And we, and we do want to have some that, we, we do want our rules to be consistent with the charter. And, and, and when we vote on this at council, if it passes, they will be. So I think we should try to get this to the council level at the end of tonight, which was our goal. But that's not to say that that can't be introduced at the council level. Mm -hmm. my, my thing, I think it should be, it can be introduced. It seems to me as though it, Every councilor's every council you ask, they all have different opinions. So maybe it should be considered <laughs> at the council level. <laughs> uh, and, and that's kind of where I was going. Um, it was either is your pleasure to send this draft, which we're feeling really comfortable with, to councilors and ask for their comment at one more ordinance meeting, or do you want to refer it right to council and go from there? That's what I. Think. Do you want to ask that question? Before? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of comfortable seeing going to council. Yeah. I mean, with the, you know, with the charter discussion, we had all sorts of amendments that we voted up or down at the council level, and all right. but we had the, the basic okay. document. So when we're done tonight, you want to send it right to council rather than to send it to the to each councilor saying, you know, well, this is your last shot. That, uh, we're going to send it forward to the next one. Freeman Daniels, because you may want to have an opportunity. To bring it here before well, it's been it's been here for a long time. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, these, these couple of these, these couple of they're, they're pretty. I mean, at least this one is pretty. The reprimand. Not one. Well, not the reprimand. I haven't read that. One, but okay. The other one, even. Well, I don't think. I, mean, I think the other one is. Maybe we can have a discussion of reprimand, but just do the same thing with reprimand as we're doing this proposed rule thirty-one. I don't think the council. Uh, let me say about thirty-one. I don't think the council is going to be taken by surprise mm -hmm. over the vote. And I can mm -hmm. I can right. circulate it prior to okay. the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. So it's going trial. Uh, right. I, well, I don't want to debate about it. <laughs> but, but the but the idea is that I, I don't think it'll be su a surprise that this was this would be this debate is it carried forward to the council. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, if you if so so I, I don't have if the if the ordinance committee wants to recommend it to the council without formally. Uh, denying or approving these these, rec these recommendations, I don't have. I, I, uh, I'd like to ask the other you know, councilors to give me their I would like to do that. I would like to discuss the second rule and send this forward with or without a recommendation, with or without the amendments. But still, I still would like to hear from Reverend Van Well, let's do that now, and then okay. when we're done, if we want to send what you've got already forward and started going and then <laughs> perfect these and they can show up to council with the whole rest of it. So, so before you, before I go to the references, I have you on the uh, I have you on the tip of the edge of your seat. Um, I I do believe I know that this has already been settled, but I, I'm going to say that I do believe that um, the council president should not be able to stay in the chair while entering into the debate. Would you like to submit an amendment to Yeah I'd like to level? Uh, yes, I'm, I would probably be doing that. I don't want to say that my my plan for that because I think we're at, we're at, we have a majority of council here. You're mm -hmm. saying, in, but just for clarification, you think the council president needs to cast the gavel? Yes, mm -hmm. I I, um, I I have a particular concern about this, not around anyone's personalities or or particular uh, implied biases, but I, I've done research. I did research. I actually researched um, 16 cities and towns, or cities, mm -hmm. that are proximal to Northampton, either in size or location. Uh, and starting with Springfield, proximal by location, and ending uh, in East Hampton, also proximal by location.
application, but, not, but both of which are not nearly approximate in size. And then going in size through Holyoke, 40,000, Woolborn, 38,000, Chelsea, 35,000, Gloucester, 28,000, Northampton, 28,000, Aguam, 28,000, West Springfield, 28,000, Melrose, 27,000, Gardner, 20,000, Greenfield, 17,000, and ending in East Hampton, 16,000. And out of all 16 cities, one allows the, the presiding officer, the president, to opine while still in the chair. Which one? One. Six, uh, 15 of them do not. 15 out of 16 do not. The other piece that I looked at, because I think that the council president has quite a lot of power when you add this other element, which is by charter, not by rules, that the president's ruling on matters of order are not subject to appeal. In other words, put those two powers together being able to opine while still in the chair and to be able to rule without subject to appeal is a very powerful chairmanship, which is, um, I think is, is procedurally very suspect. So I, I cross-referenced the, com the communities that allow the president to rule on matters of order without being subject to appeal. And that is also Gloucester, they can opine, but they do not have... Other way around. In Gloucester... Oh, they may not opine, but they um, have a strong... But they, but there's no appeal. There's no appeal. Open. Northampton, there's no appeal by charter. Gloucester oh. also by charter. Okay. No council. No council rules. No councils voluntarily allowed the president to rule on matters of order without appeal. Both Gloucester and Northampton have given the president, by charter, even more power. So if we were to, so, so to be equal to East Hampton, we would eliminate one, one thing that could happen, we would eliminate the, um, the, uh, oh, oh, no like, oh, opine. No, they opine in East so Hampton. So right? in, in, in East Hampton, Hampton the president, they don't have the appeal. That's the case. In other words, I mean, they have they appeal. appeal. They have appeal. So if we were to allow appeal by members of this city council, then we'd be identical to these But we can't. Right. But we can't because of the job. So in effect, Northampton would be the only city in the Commonwealth that's even remotely similar to other cities of population or geography. The only city in the Commonwealth that would allow the president to rule on matters of order without appeal and to sit in the same chair, which allows rules of matter on matter ruling on matters of order and opine from that same chip. And I think that is too much power. And I'm gonna I'll say it here and I'll say it again. I can forward this to you. I've, I've got I've got the cross section. I've got all 16 council rules from uh, the hardest one was to collect was Chelsea. They don't publish them. <laughs> I, I mean they're, they're public record but they don't publish them. I have to I have to call the council president and ask him for them. But um, I have I have 16 plus Worcester, which obviously is the mayor, so it's a diff, slightly different, but 17 cities and cities across Massachusetts, none of them would have both. The mayor chairs there? Yes. That's the only other city that doesn't? Well, it's the only one city close to Northampton. But doesn't uh, Worcester, the council elects the mayor in Worcester, doesn't that's it? Right. So it is essentially a councilor. Well, I don't, I don't know about the, I mean, I just, I don't know about the process, but I do know, I read in the rules, the, the mayor doesn't opine while sitting in the chair and does not, and that ruling on matters of order are, are um, reviewable. So, uh, Worcester and Northampton are the two out of 17 or 16, depending how you read Worcester, mm -hmm. that allow absolute authority of the president. And out of all 17, East Hampton is the only one which allows president to sit in the chair and give opinions. And most importantly, no one has both. No, not a single one has both, but if we pass these rules, we, Northampton, would be the first one to afford the president both of those powers. I, I just believe, for, for the very sake of, of being able to conceive of, of, an, of, a, of a very, of a case where the president absolutely rules, 
of someone being out of order in order to opine him or herself. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's abusive. I think it could be abusive. And, and, and so I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm opposing it here. Mm -hmm. I understand the committee might not want to strike it, but I'm also going to oppose it on the council floor as well. It might be more helpful to hear about all of the 330 that help come in cities and towns rather than limit it. I think it may be a false. By looking at city size, uh, population size isn't necessarily, I mean, it's really just about a procedural body. I think then necessarily but, Well, town meeting is different. It, yeah, town meeting with the city. Because Northampton is half the size of Northampton. Right. We could look, you know, but we can't, we can't look at the size. Yeah, right. you, did, you did similarly sized, similarly sized for the state, geographic. and similar in geographic location. <coughs> so these are all of similar. Well, it would be helpful here, though, just to see what all 300. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't want well, you to go to the It must be uh, uh, irrelevant. Some well, spreadsheet or something somewhere. Somebody's done it. No, I'm the one. But I'll tell you, um, I, I agree with you. I, that's why I did this, because actually, um, Massachusetts doesn't have, there's some, it, 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 surprisingly, there's some. Um, Towns which have city charters, but don't it, uh, somehow don't, still have town meeting. Yeah, have town meeting and executive boards, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, whatever uh, select uh, select mm -hmm. boards. Right. And then um, and the towns aren't aren't relevant in the same way. Right. Um, right. right. So so I did actually. I spent Sunday morning, you know, going through the through the um, all the town all the cities in Massachusetts that are similar in size or geography um, that have because there are some cities that are similar in size, but they don't have they don't have the city arrangement. They that they um, they still have the town meeting, uh, and these are it. So but just hypothetically, on that matter, if the council if the council president passes the gavel for one matter, does the does the gavel come back? To yes, the it's okay. Like that. And then the next matter comes up and passes the gavel again. <laughs> <coughs> and then get to that, and then it theoretically could be passed thirty times. So, but if, if, the, if a president does, is is one who frequently opines, then they probably shouldn't be the president. <laughs> if, if you're going to have that structure, yeah. I mean, you, I would think you would want to eliminate yourself from consideration if you. If you have any say you, in any matter, you just have to. Speak no, I mean, <laughs> uh, let's let's keep in mind you can always vote, but but yeah, but you can't. But I, I mean, I, I'm just because you can always vote. I mean, it, you're still. I don't like the I don't like the option that doesn't give that takes away anybody's right to opine. Well, I just <coughs> want to say that we, we we have is we have a very strong president simply by the fact that the president's rulings or the, the person sitting the in the chair. Rulings are something I think that could be considered. I, I would pre, I would prefer seeing rulings considered than the right to opine. But what you're saying is that That's can be considered no, because it's part of the charge. Chart. So we've so we afforded the president a very strong power. When that when that comes, mm -hmm. um, and it it doesn't seem to be to, to me at least to be excessively burdensome to pass the gavel, um, but I think what we'd see in the future is a president who uh, is <coughs> many much, much like our president, our current president, who, whose stated goals are to facilitate conversation and debate, mm -hmm. and to uh, you know and to and to um, and to encourage transparency and open deliberating, even though we also know by personality that our president loves to gab, we, I think we would see that the, the, the presidents who are more, um, who afforded this charter power are more interested in the flow of the council business and less interested, like I would be a terrible president because I have to open my mouth about everything, so and less interested in that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It, 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 it just have to be more of a facilitator and if that rule, if your rule passes, I don't think it's going to go forward like that. If, if your amendment passed, the president would have to just consider whether or not they want the role, and whether or not, and, and, and ask themselves if they um, want to be more of a, of a, a facilitator than, than, than someone who frequently comments. Emphasis on more. And more. Right, because you can always pass the gavel. I right, you can always. It's helpful for us to hear too from from drafters of the charter. Um, as to their intent in giving the council president the gavel and writing the the um, the uh, procedural. I think that was an oversight. If well, it was an oversight, then I think it's important that we hear something from them. And then I also, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not all I'm not all that concerned about being the only one, frankly. Gloucester, <laughs> by the way, Gloucester, their charter, which is the only other. 
rule that gives the president absolute authority. Yep. Their charter looks a lot like ours. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe it. Came out of the same drawer at the Collins Center. That's right. Yeah. And I, I think, mean, and I, I think I, that's I, an oversight. If there are, I, I mean, I'm more interested in hearing about actual problems than necessarily potential problems. Well, we'll never be able to unless we. <laughs> there isn't a city that has both of those two powers completely <laughs> joined. Right. It could be a test case. Right. But so I, think it's, I think it's good to try to uh, foresee if there could be problems because if you if you if you start experience the pro experiencing the problems, uh, mm -hmm. then it may be, it may I mean, it's not too late. You can it can last change as your long rules. as two years. It can last as long as two years, right? That's and it. I think, and that's what? how I can last. I think that's a very. I think, I think a full council <laughs> session is a long yeah. time. I don't think that's only. I think that's a long time. And you know, thinking about all the dozens and dozens and dozens of votes we take during a session, some of them extremely important. Um, if we run the problems and that chair is, is chair for, the, for two full years, I think that's tremendously no, problematic. It does. It could be. It, it does require us to think long and hard who you put in the chair in the first exactly. place. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I think of it. You know, you're going to think, oh, I, you know, they're a fine counselor, but the how are they? How are they going to handle? Right. Being right. a facilitator and a, not a... I think it's a trail. But you remember, the president can always pass the gavel. So you're uh, not taking and, that right away. And, and right, you exactly. you have to I give up your... two together, being able to... Uh, and we've had six months to, now, yeah. or more. We've had eight not months. We, we, we've actually lived eight months under this, right? Since, uh, oh no, since Three. November. Yeah. Three months. Yeah, we really started... So I, I would imagine we'd start, we, we would have started to see by now if there were... Problem, right? But I don't think we're suggesting that the bill is going to be a problem. I, 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 I don't think any of us foresee that. He's, from what I've seen, I think perfectly mm -hmm. adequate. But, but he has opined. Mm -hmm. He has opined. He has opined, but um, we had to say. He opined at the last meeting. On the had, middle I, screen. I, I think he's, yeah. well, I think, um, but no one's made an, an attempt to rule him out of order either. So you wouldn't really see that problem. Um, it, it, you wouldn't see any problem with the fact that the council president is um, the final decision maker with respect to rules of order, unless someone's ruled that president out of order. Mm -hmm. So we haven't seen, maybe haven't seen problems with, with opining, but but um, or any any negative 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 ramifications coming from opining. But um, we haven't seen anything with respect to the power at all. So we couldn't know if both of them could buy and could be an abuse. I just I have to agree. I just I, I think we can drop it, but I, I do believe that it's a those two powers together are mm -hmm. very powerful because it not only can you, you're not only able to enter in debate, but you can control the rules. Of the Plus, case. I just don't want to be reactive. If, if, if we elect the president and, and they're in their problem for two years, that's at that, that point you're being reactive, and that, that, can be, that can be very damaging to the deliberations if a president becomes out of control. I want to be proactive with these rules. We have the opportunity, we have the mandate to, to draft a set of rules that's consistent with the new charter. And if this passes, we're doing that. But we can also take this opportunity to be proactive, too. And I, I think we really need to consider potential dangers, like Councilor Freeman Daniel was talking about. Moving along to the center. The, yeah, um, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, this, is, this is my, uh, so again, the, the upshot or, down, or downside of having 16 council rules in your, on your computer <laughs> is that you can review them. And um, you can think, as I have been, uh, and I've, I've balanced this idea off Councillor Adams, that it's good to have rules, but sometimes, and, and, but sometimes when rules are broken, nothing happens. Uh, so the idea here is that, at, at, well, actually, the idea is that at any time, under, I think, the old rules or the new rules, at any time, a councillor can introduce a resolution that would, uh, that would express disapproval of a fellow counselor for whatever for whatever reason. Producing a late file uh, beyond that at the time. Is, I'm asking because you mentioned, you know, violation of any of these rules. So actually, would it be a duty of reprimand? No, I wouldn't think so. No, I'm not trying to say that. Okay. Um, By so, reading this, I don't think so. It's so the, my whole point is that right now you have, any counselor can introduce a resolution uh, issuing a reprimand, or issuing a censure of, a, of another counselor. We just don't do it. It's not, it's not very well respected. Um, but uh, this, what I was trying to do here was introduce a, a more formal process which allowed for some protections 
um, and allowed for a, a pretty much last resort um, if a counselor uh, blatantly breaks the rules of the, of the, of the council. Uh, the, uh, the reprimand would, the, the council president or vice president, uh, if you remember, we had an issue where the council president, a few years ago, I think the council president did an investigation, did a sort of informal investigation around, um, I think, the open, open meeting law violation, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this would be a, a council president could execute a voluntary interview or review of public records in an investigation, but only after a resolution to reprimand had been introduced on the council floor. So it kind of gives a process. Um, and the counselor who's the subject of a, of a reprimand would have the right to speak in their defense on the council floor. Uh, and, um, and that's basically the, the, the gist of it. The idea is that the council rules I think are very good. Um, when they pass, you want to make sure that someone who consistently breaks them would be subject to some discipline, whether it's just a, a formal, whether it's just someone's, the, the rest of the council saying you shouldn't be breaking these rules. That's, I mean, that's basically what this amounts to. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, a little concerned that, that it's not, it doesn't really emphasize egregious wrong. So, for example, someone who um, chair of a subcommittee who hasn't been able to get their minutes <laughs> yeah, you in can. order, right. you know, I, after for numerous meetings in a row, you know, another counselor could issue on the floor mm -hmm. in a very public way a, a, a resolution to reprimand that counselor for their negligence. And yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Um, so I'm wondering whether, you know, limiting the reprimand to more egregious wrongs in some way, you know, would be... And, and we could even pull out, there are, you know, I, I think well, that, yeah. that, well, that Councillor Dwight, sense. when Councillor Dwight talked about wanting to have reprimand, I think he mentioned that the last time. Was that he was talking about reprimand? Or, uh, Disapproval, censure, they're all kind of in the same ballpark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it would have to do with or, you know, the um, rules regarding the treatment of each other on the floor. I mean, there were some we times that we had name calling going on in these rooms. Yeah, 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 people awful. being called a bald headed egghead yeah, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not you, but that was someone else was who was a reason to buy counsel. Oh, me. Yes, yes, um, Councilor yeah. Barge. Was, That's when the lawyers stepped yes, in. Yes, was on the radio described in a very yeah, something about your transport to this country. Derogatory <laughs> way. <laughs> Nasty way. Yeah, there were, there were, so I think it's probably, we might want to, rather than say in the, a, a council violation of these, rather than limiting it to these rules, we might want to be more specific yeah, in some way mean, to other things or, than, than the, you know, the nuts and bolts of these or, rules uh, that can be... Right, if you can properly invoke some rule or, or, if you or come something like minor, or, right, something minor, yeah. Like or we don't, we don't want a counselor. Or a threshold where the council, you know, you have to get the council to agree to do the investigate, you know, just so. Do you want to make it like that? Like you, the resolution needs to be sponsored by mm -hmm. four counselors or something? Yeah, that it has to be has authorized. Has to, a lot of people have you know, to that yes, the council, that you can put forward a request for reprimand, but it has to the council, a majority of the council has to say yes, we authorize the council president to investigate this. The majority? Is that, would that just so there's a threshold or of a threshold? I'm just, I'm just, I don't know whether the subject should be breaking one or more of these council rules. The council rules themselves are just so administrative. Mm -hmm. is what I'm, I'm well, thinking. That's, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're like about, <laughs> I mean, you should I mean, conduct, you can see that. Like, so yes. conduct. So especially you could you, you could actually you could you could say any counselor in violation of Rule 16, all conduct shall be civil and respectful, including counselors. That might be something that would be appropriate yeah. to reprimand yeah. someone. Yeah. You might want to pull out those ones rather than because it could e somebody could easily be in in violation of. Uh, Oh, yeah, proposing I ordinances is, in a non time right. way. Or you, you say you want it. You don't want it to be a demerit system. You want it to be. You don't want it to be used as a, oh, you got four, you got four reprimands last year, I got seven, you know. But yeah, you yeah, that's right, or seating arrangements, say so you came in and sat in the wrong seat. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of them, and they're confusing, and people don't get them wrong. You want to be 
subject to this. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that your body would say, oh, forget it. That's ridiculous. Right. 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 Plus, where's the representation? You have employees, okay, who get recommended. But they also have their rights to counsel. So, does the city councilor have their rights to bring in their counsel? Well, it, it, it does say in here that um, the counselor who is subject to the, of a resolution to reprimand shall have the right to speak, so they have the right to speak. And I'm talking about hand. bringing in their own attorney's counselor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't no, no, I don't see any people so. saying that. Uh, but they can speak on their behalf. Um, all right. Okay. So, That's all I mean, I to but know. even if you get reprimanded, <laughs> if you get five bucks, you still can get a coffee at Starbucks. I mean, it's I not like the end of the world. <laughs> right. Well, well, buy a I mean, just to have a, you know, I think it's just to have your name introduced well, as a, it's a I mean, you don't, reprimand you don't want the floor. majority of your fellow I counselors. I think it should be limited to things like conduct. I you know, I'm looking at things like order and manner of speaking. So no person shall speak more than once on a question. I think guilty of that. Of that. Well, you know, I mean, and certainly I would be open to reprimand. You know, as would any counselor. You're spoken more than once on an amendment. So, so I'm not. I'm just. The thing is, I'm hearing mixed messages. Well, okay. what what I'm saying is, I, I I think it should be limited rather than saying. Um, right. Any um, of these rules. Any. Yeah. Any but, of but, these breaking any of these I'm, rules. I'm hearing a different one from counselor. Because. Yeah, he's I'd, saying I'd like to, matters. Like a, <laughs> no, no. I'd like to. I'd like to go I through. I, I mean, I could go through and pick and choose. Like the one that. Pretty easy. The one that for me might be concerning. The one that I think of. Mm -hmm. uh, other than the order, the decorum and respect, which are obviously very important, and and um, the other councils, by the way, the other co uh, council rules are specific, are mostly focused around um, order of speaking. Counselors who interrupt each other will become subject to reprimand, or a few council, uh, a few city councils uh, employ a sergeant at arms who will remove the offending counselor at the request of. So they, they, that's that's the other than those, other than the, the decorum and the order of speaking, I can think of a counselor who might be opposed, for instance, to a particular order or ordinance, who refuses to put it on the agenda for 60 days. So it basically breaks the referral. Yeah. And, and you know you want to have that. You want to be able to reprimand them for that. To to my mind. So. I, Picking and choosing might be more difficult. How would that counselor have the have, have the ability? They could be the chair. It? They, for instance, you could refer to a committee that they're the chair. Yeah, but if they're, if, but if they're the minority and the majority of the subcommittee has voted to forward it with a recommendation, then it's uh, it, it, it's forwarded. Right, you saying might, that's not communicated the not to the right? They might not never. They might not ever put it on the agenda. Well, I don't know. But but Councilor Murphy had a different idea, and I just. Because Murphy's idea is that the reprimand would have to be introduced by four or five count by a majority by five councils. Yes. You'd have to, and then it, it would be what would have to say. I see. Because then you'd have to get four. So you'd have, have to get four or five people. Right. To so agree instead of picking and choosing the particular ones, that you'd have to have a majority ask for the investigation to take place. So I, that might be a different route. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm yeah. hearing mixed messages. I don't yeah, know what I you think. think. Yeah. And that way you've got that threshold to say, if you can't get the majority of council to agree this is worth being looked into, then it just goes away. Right. Right. I do, I think that, I, I would request that people are important enough to at least be subject to this because, because um, I think, it, I think your, your point is that if you break rules, there should be some potential ramification. Right. That's, that's some good. teeth. But I think a lot of these, there really shouldn't be any teeth. So I think you really should go through and figure out which ones, which rules that broken really do pose real okay. significant. So I'll, I'll bring problems. this back with, with both suggestions. I'll, I'll pick I'll pick out some, and I'll have is four or do you want all uh, majority? No, no, not a majority. Four. I don't think you want a majority. I think you want want four. Is that reasonable? Think I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking five are discussing it outside the parameters of the council. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that. Please. You had your hand up. Do you have a quick comment or are you okay? You okay? No comment? Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll rework this as well. Thanks. So then for the ones that, with the exception of these, do we want to have a motion to move the rest of them forward with a positive recommendation? Are we at that point? Second. Well, I guess we are. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. So we'll get them going.
then you'll perfect these and they'll okay. show up at the council debate. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah. So do we have, do any of you have any additional business could not be anticipated? Mary does. Shoot up differently.